Hi, my name is Jody, and um, I'd like to go ahead and try my first video vlog. Um, today I'm going to answer a question that Adi left. It's called um, a bulletproof method for getting readers invested in a character on the first page. And um, first of all, I've got to say um, this is straight through. Um, there's no video editing because I don't know how to video edit. Um, so I, I will say I'm a lot. Um, so and there I did it again. First thing I gotta say is that uh, you know, there's no really bulletproof way. Um, everything is genre specific, so that means that there's a lot of um, give, you know, in, in what you're gonna put on a first page. Somebody who reads a contemporary romance is not gonna want to have um, the heroine running across across a moor. Um, in the same way somebody who's reading a thriller is not really going to want to read uh, somebody's girlfriend sitting down and having coffee with her best friend. So that said, um, you know, one of the biggest things you can do for your opening is know exactly what you're writing. Uh, that sounds a little trite. Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, I say that to people all the time and they kind of give me that virtual look. But um, if you don't know what you're writing, um, ask a friend because um, Sometimes, you know, genres, they kind of blur. Things like uh, urban fantasy and paranormals, they're very close, but uh, how they're handled is different, which is what throws something off. Um, if you're giving an urban paranormal or an urban fantasy to somebody and they're expecting a paranormal, they're not going to like it because the setup is different. Um, so that said, um, after a little thought, I realized that the strongest way um, it's not bulletproof, but it is the strongest way to get a reader invested in your character on the first page is with, with, with what's called a character-based hook. Um, a character-based hook is, um, well, it covers a wide range of things, but basically what it does is it focuses on a character's reaction to something interesting. And um, for that, I'd like to go ahead and read the first paragraph. It's only a paragraph. <laughs> Bear with me as I read this um, of three books, or two books actually, that are first in series. Um, these books started off uh, totally unknown authors into very long careers. And I'd like to think it's on the basis of the strength of these first books. Um, I do remember back when they first came out, you know, and I was a person who haunted Barnes and Noble that. I read the first two pages of these two books and I immediately fell in love with these authors and I had to read the rest of their series. They're decades long series. The first one is Stormfront. Um, okay, got to get that book in there. By Jim Butcher. Um, many of you have read this book and uh, it's not the strongest book he's ever written. Um, I think as he went on, I think like number three, four or five, are some of the strongest books he ever wrote, but you know, that was a process. Um, but you know, as something that is a first book, you know, this is fabulous. And uh, so let me go ahead and do this. Um, I heard the mailman approach my office door half an hour earlier than usual. He didn't sound right. His footsteps fell more heavily, jauntily, and he whistled. A new guy. He whistled his way to my office door, then fell silent for a moment. Then he laughed. Okay, right. gotta say this. This is great. Um, it's obvious, you know, from the blurb on the back that something interesting is going on in this book. A character-based hook or an opening is, you know, actually a two-parter. Your reader is more than likely not going to just open your book up without even bothering to read your blurb. He's going to at least skip it. So I read the back of this book and I said, hmm, that sounds interesting. And then I read the first page and I said, oh, yeah, that really is actually very interesting. Um, this guy, this wizard, this wizard for hire, he sounds kind of embarrassed. He sounds vulnerable, um, a little hard boiled ish, but, you know, he's a hard boiled, embarrassed guy. And uh, this intrigued me enough to buy this book. You know, he. Um, Actually, this is one of his conflicts um, over the course of his series that, you know, until he grew into it, Harry was, you know, a little embarrassed by people making fun of him. So um, this is a really good character based hook. Second one is, okay, got to get that book back up there, Daughter of the Blood. 
by Ann Bishop. Love this series. Love Damon. Love Lucifer. Um, so let's go ahead and do this one too. This one is... I'm skipping the prologue. Lucifer Yeslana, the Aryan half-breed, watched the guards drag the sobbing men to the boat. He felt no sympathy for the condemned man who had led the aborted slave revolt. In the, ter in the territory called Prul, sympathy was a luxury no slave could afford. Ah, hey, the back was great. The inside of it was super intriguing. Okay, I love the name. I like the way he's a slave. Um, I like the way this shows that even though he says he's not sympathetic, he really is, you know. Um, there's nothing like a vulnerable hero. Hey, same thing with Harry. Um, I did like that. I guess this is something I really like. Um, in these two genres, which, you know, well, urban fantasy and, uh, well, fantasy, um, you know, what I got met my expectations. Um, so let's talk about something that kind of sort of does that. Um, and this is a book that I really like. This is called Barrier. This is by Lois Bichold. Um Let me read it first and um, then we'll talk about it. This also has a character-based hook. Um, well, actually, it's really long first paragraph, so I'm just going to read the first couple of, you know, sentences. I'm afraid. Cordelia's hand pushed aside the drape in the third floor parlor window of her Borkosigan house. She stared down into the sunlit street below. A long silver ground car was pulling into the half-circular drive that serviced the front port portico, breaking past the spiked iron fence and the earth imported shrubbery, a government car. And, um, well, anyway, this is actually very interesting. It goes on to show that there's a situation brewing. She's super afraid. And um, as this opening plays out, we get a good look at uh, the guy she's in love with and she married. His name is Errol. I, I love him too. He's so cool. Um, this book launched a five-year search for an out-of-print book that came before it. I thought this was book one. Um, but it was actually this book. Huh? Can't get that. Shards Vaughn. This is actually my favorite book, but this is only my favorite book because I had already fallen in love with Cordelia and Errol. And, um, you know, if I had read this book and picked it up, I mean, I looked at the back, whoops, wrong way, okay, there we go, and um, I read the inside, I wouldn't have bothered with the series. If this had been the book I had picked up at Barnes & Noble, I would have went past a series that I loved to death. And uh, let me go ahead and show you why. There we go. A sea of mist drifted through the cloud forest, soft, gray, and luminescent. On the high ridges, the fog showed brighter as the morning sun began to warm and lift the moisture. Oh, yeah. Scenery. Um, we really don't get to see Cordelia into a couple of chap uh, a couple of paragraphs in. Um, and even then, she's really not doing anything except looking at the scenery because she's um, a first in scout. Well, she's more than that, but you know what I mean. And um, this is not really what I wanted. This this is um, very clearly um, a pre-2000 sci-fi book. It starts with scenery. It's not very interesting. It's got some nice cover. I like the cover. <laughs> Um, but, you know, it, it's not, hey, there we go. It's not Barrier. Barrier has got a picture of a person. Shards of Honor has got the spaceship front and center, even though it's got Arrow and Cordelia in the background. Um, styles change, you know? Best thing I can do is say stay current with your styles. You know, it. it I, I personally think that uh, books have moved from you know, the scenery and traveling type thing with the cars and whatever to um, character based and which is what these other three books are. They are very strongly character based. They show me a look at the character's reaction to something interesting that's happening. Um, you know, 
Lucifer is looking at this slave who's going to get killed. Um, Harry is totally embarrassed by this mailman, even though he's trying to pretend he's not. And, uh, you know, Cordelia, she's looking at the man she loves and the reason she's going to get into this huge situation. And uh, it's bad. And, you know, then the traveling scene. Well, not the traveling scene, but the looking at the scenery scene. Um, so what can I say about that is that if you're going to start with a hook, and I, I would recommend, you know, try to start with a hook. Um, remember that action rises. You know, if you're going to start way at the bottom, action is going to take a long way or a long time to rise. Um, you don't want your reader to say, well, oh, the book is really slow. Um, you want them to actually just be really engrossed from Chris Page. Um, so these other books um, start with a high. Okay, okay, right here. The hook is high. Um, but the thing about high hooks is that when you start with a high hook, you don't want to drop it on the second page. And that's where a lot of people go wrong, is that um, if you're going to start with something high, you need to keep going higher because um, that's what the dramatic pyramid is. It just is a pyramid. It lifts. Um, and for that, I'd like to talk about the two born identities. I like these videos because um, they are exactly the same things, um, just done different ways. Um, when you look at these two Matt Damon videos, you'll notice that um, there is something very different about it, is that the action doesn't stop. Um, it starts with, you know, uh, Jason in the water and being pulled onto the boat. And uh, then it immediately launches into, you know, the operation and then what's your name? This takes about five minutes or actually four and a half minutes. Um, this is a pace thing and also a choice of what you're using next. This is not the way the actual book is written. Um, this is actually an invention of Tony Gilroy, the guy who wrote the screenplay for this. He took the action, he condensed it, um, and tightened the pace. If you look at the Richard Chamberlain version, um, I'm only talking about the first 15 pages or 15 uh, minutes or less, actually up until like the 10 minute mark. Um, that 10 minutes covers the exact same, same, honest to God, same story events that are in the Tony Gilroy version of this. Um, so you're taking double the amount of time to get to the same point. Now, you know, um, I, I do realize this is like an older movie um, and the Tony Gilroy version is a newer movie. Um, but, you know, if you look at it, you're going to see... Uh, Richard Chamberlain spiraling down in the water. Okay, you don't see that in the Matt Damon version. That is slow. So he's shot. He falls overboard. Then he spirals down and we drop the pace. Um, that's not very interesting. The only thing that's actually interesting is the fact that the music is pu pushing upward. Um, it's telling you this is going to be an interesting thing. So stay tuned because the music is going upward. Um, so and then he washes up on shore and you know and then the music you know um, it's really actually not very interesting um, this is actually uh, kind of boring so and, and that's a result of uh, dropped pace there are interesting moments that are exciting and tense but there is also a lot of slowness in between um, this is the same thing that would happen in a book if you went and said okay and well here's Cordelia and she's looking at Errol and uh, let's go to the butler's pantry and talk to the chef or something. Um, or if Lucifer, you know, started scratching his uh, leg or something. But sure, maybe his leg is itching, but you don't have to show that. Uh, I mean, you know that his leg is itching, but the reader doesn't need to know it. Um, so, you know, so I did write down, um, you know, a summary. And give me a second here because I, I need to go ahead and get to it. So. What are my recommendations? Uh, my recommendations are stay tight, don't wander off. Um, you know, don't drop the ball. You do have to keep lifting your action when you start with an interesting character based hook. Um, be interesting. You know, pick something that is going to be of interest to the reader. Uh, I mean, this is not the time to go do a backstory dump. 
Uh, you can do the backstory dump later, a couple pages in or something, and sprinkle it in, but uh, don't put it on your first couple pages. Um, keep lifting. You know, if you're going to pick something, if you don't know if you're dropping the ball, have a friend read it and tell you if, you know, the pace is going up instead of just totally going down. Um, and don't start with the CN. Thank you for watching.